Bryce. Time for us to turn our attention to rugby. Our next guest, Owen, you want to ask the first question here? <laughs> yes, we do, because Jeremy Guscott, first of all, a very good morning to you. How are things? Yeah, morning, Owen. Morning, Chair. Uh, you Welcome were with us here. in studio a couple of weeks ago saying that Irish people are too negative about their rugby team. You predicted that we would win the Six Nations. You were at least half right in this because we went out and put in <laughs> a, a very, very good performance against Wales. Yeah, I mean, uh, I kind of, I, I couldn't believe the negativity. We were there over with, with Keith Wood doing a function and um, everybody was really down and thinking, it was going to be a difficult uh, Six Nations. And, and I always think, you know, that, that everyone is quite equal, very very balanced in terms of uh, no one's running away with unbelievable performances over the last sort of 18 months, which means a side is, is going to run away with the Six Nations. So I think home advantage is pretty crucial. Uh, and against Wales, I mean, they it turns out they flattered to deceive against Italy and uh, Ireland actually improved. I don't think Wales didn't turn out and play poorly. I, I truly believe Ireland played the smartest rugby, took their opportunities and thoroughly deserved their victory. The England performance um, over the last 18 months has been steadily building, we thought, heading into the, the Six Nations. I, I guess the most important performance that they've had over that uh, period of time was the World Cup semi-final where they played so well. And there were reasons that you could point to in the aftermath of the final why they didn't play particularly well in the final. And that, I think that was kind of the, the basis for a lot of people here, thinking that England were going to have the Six Nations fairly easily. But it turns out there has been a bit of a, a World Cup hangover. Is this just a World Cup hangover? Is it Eddie Jones building for the future? Why have they not been able to reach the standards of that World Cup semi-final performance again? You know what? I think every side has suffered a little bit from the World Cup. I can remember just about coming back from World Cups and the attention you, you had whilst you were playing was enormous. It's, it's, it's bigger than the Six Nations in terms of the focus on you as a team, the expectation, the pressure. Uh, you come back to your club, and it takes a little time to just get back into the way of, uh, of playing. And, and those three months only seems a short time. It's a long time. Um, so I just think guys are just getting used to it. But I, I just truly believe the competition is hard. Um, I think you flatter England by saying, you know, they've been steadily building uh, over the last 18 months. They've had indifferent results, not winning the, uh, the Six Nations last year. But they do, they have, over the, I think, over the last couple of seasons, lost crucial games. Um, and that's a frustration because one week you're playing brilliantly, two games you might go okay, and then you just drop the ball. The, the performance against France was inexplicable. I can't tell you the last time I saw an England team play so poorly. Um, it was frustrating against uh, against Scotland because the weather conditions were poor, but even in those poor conditions, the kicking strategy was, was a good idea, wasn't executed very well. And this is where I think Ireland have the advantage. As much as I guess Joe Schmidt might have been criticised after the, the Rugby World Cup performance by Ireland, what he's put in place in terms of what they do, when they do it, how they do it, the accuracy that they do it with. He's got good systems in Irish. Andy Farrell, and they're probably a little bit more flair added to attack. So Ireland are a dangerous team. There's also been a lot of credit given, Jeremy, over the last couple of weeks to Mike Cash and his attacking strategy and his plan as a coach in his first couple of months uh, in the Ireland setup. Uh, you obviously know Mike. What's he like as a guy? Are you surprised to see that Ireland have started to make steps into a brave new world of attacking strategy that isn't so rigid? You know, this the life of a coach is tough these days, isn't it? I mean, it, it, what are they, two games in under Andy and, uh, uh, and Mike, and already there might be some criticism. I think you've got to give them both and, and the team a, a bit more time to actually see where their mark is. Maybe Mike Cat, not maybe, definitely Mike Cat would have given them a lot more latitude than I would I would imagine Joe did in, in attacking. Uh, certainly, I, I, Mike Cat was one of the best fly I've ever played with. I mean, his vision, his ambition, his ability to create much space himself and to run into space was a joy to, to play play alongside and I think Mike you know Mike has uh, been with the England squad he went to Italy he's now with Ireland and I mean there's a lot of talent in that side and to be able to work with that class of player must be a joy but you've got to give them their time and their opportunity I mean look at Simon Amor 
the new attack coach for England. We can't see his mark on the England side yet. So let, let's give them some time. What kind of a performance do you expect from England then? Home advantage obviously being so important. They are favourites uh, with the bookmakers heading into this game. What kind of a performance and a response do you expect from the first two games that we've seen from this side against Ireland this weekend? Well, if England don't play a smarter style of, of, of rugby, I see them getting beaten by Ireland. However, at home, England will be a different team than what we've seen so far. The, they will really relish the opportunity to play in front of their home crowd. It should be capacity. And they will feed off the, the, the back of the two last games that, that they played against Ireland. If they bring that intensity, intensity accuracy, low error count, they will be difficult to, build, uh, to beat. And I think Ireland like this possession game. If England brings some strong defence, I, I think that's where they should do well. Um, uh, Tuolangi coming back. Uh, and I think the forwards would be buoyed because whilst it was an unattractive performance against Scotland, it was gritty, it was determined. Uh, they stayed in the game and eventually won. And uh, you can't say that about England a lot over the last couple of seasons, that they actually dug in, round out a victory. It was hard fought. And, you know, the, the forwards would have walked off that pitch cold, in the in the wet in the wind and looked at each other and thought you know what we did a decent job I don't care what anybody says afterwards we dug in and we we deserved that victory so they'll take that in, in into Sunday's game and again home advantage is so big at the moment and I and I see them just sneaking a game against Ireland I think I think they they'll raise their game and they'll they'll beat Ireland at the weekend at home um, you mentioned Tuilagi the the stats um, in Tuilagi's career. He is kryptonite for Ireland. He's played us five times. He has won every single time that he has played oh, against wow. us. Um, it's notable that when we won the Grand Slam at Twickenham, he wasn't playing and uh, Vinopolo wasn't playing. I think neither of the Vinopolos were playing. So um, certainly if he's in the team, uh, we, we will look on that as a slightly different challenge than if he's not in the team. Certainly we would have been doing handstands, the fact that he wasn't playing. So yeah. I don't know why he's so important specifically against Ireland. Maybe that's just one of those weird statistical anomalies with a small sample size. Yeah, I think it is weird. I mean, maybe uh, that, yeah, it's the way it rolls. You, you, you always go out wanting to play well, but um, it doesn't always work out. I mean, I, I would say you've got a good foil in Aki and, and Henshaw, if that's the pairing. Uh, Henshaw was all over the place. I mean, he's really, he caught my eye against Wales. He, he just really wanted the ball uh, so much and was making ground. Uh, he, he seems reinvigorated. He, 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 you know, the, the Lions is next year. He wants to put his hand up for that. There's good competition with Aki and Ringrose. Is injured, but there's, there's going to be competition. Uh, and if he puts in another performance, he might nullify uh, to Alangi, but let's be honest, uh, Manu is a force of nature. If he's in the right mind and has the right attitude, you know, he, as we saw in Dublin last season, he 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 can make big dents in defences, and England can feed off that uh, go forward ball. And while you're making the point that it's too early for us yet to see the impact of the new attack coach on England's play, what what should we be looking out for? What what? are the pointers that you're hoping to see over the next, uh, let's say, six months, a year? But like, what are the beginnings of uh, philosophy emerging that we should be looking for in this game? I would like to see more strike moves from from uh, set piece. Um, I don't think we see enough of that I I in the modern game. Uh, I think Amor coming from sevens might be more in tune with that. I would like to see, and this is a real bugbear of mine, I just don't like forwards from the breakdown catching the ball and then starting to run. Uh, the defence has got so much of a head start. I want to see forwards, you know, having run five yards, take the ball and run another five at pace. Um, and I would like to see Amor develop that with those English forwards. I think we've got a number of good ball carriers when everybody's fit um, to really put some dents in defences and give us that quick ball. Quick ball is so important for attack for the attacking game. If you don't get quick ball, you've got to start all over again. And I was, would always advocate kicking, uh, but many teams just prefer to, uh, to to keep possession. But quick ball, attack, look for the space, a lot of communication and, and intensity and accuracy. That's what I'd love to see from England. But of course, all sides want to do that. Did you ever lose to Ireland in Twickenham? 94 maybe? 
I was injured. I ah, think. That's, yeah, that's why. Um, yeah, <laughs> no. Um, I, lo- I loved playing Ireland. I, you know, I loved the Five Nations. I didn't uh, play in the Six Nations, but the tournament as a whole is great. And where, where you go to play, um, you're always well received. There might be, um, you know, a, a little bit of stick from when when you 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 go uh, to places like Edinburgh and Cardiff in my day. But Dublin, we were always well received, and I hope the Irish are well received on Sunday. And, it, and it's a game that we we can talk happily about, whether you are Irish or whether you're English. Jeremy, great to have you with us. Thanks a million. Enjoy the game. Pleasure. Have a good one. That's uh, Jeremy Guscott there giving us some thoughts ahead of the game this weekend. What is it? Bang on 9 o'clock this morning, this Wednesday morning.